People often think that biodiversity refers to the number of organisms living in a place, but it's not that simple. There are actually different measures of biodiversity, but we're focusing on species diversity here, and the number of species present is only part of that. We call that species richness, but species diversity is made up of both the richness and evenness of the species there. Species evenness tells us the relative population of each species. An ecosystem dominated mainly by one species has a lower evenness and a lower species diversity, all other things being equal. It's sometimes useful to compare the biodiversity in two ecosystems, or the changing biodiversity over time in a single ecosystem. And sometimes it's obvious. A place that has a wide range of species in relatively equal numbers has a higher biodiversity than a place with few species in unequal proportions. But sometimes it's not so obvious. What if there are lots of species, but there's low evenness? How high is the biodiversity in this ecosystem? Simpson's Diversity Index involves doing a little calculation, taking into account the species richness and evenness of an ecosystem, and assigning a number to represent the biodiversity. Uppercase N is the total number of organisms. Lowercase N is the population of each individual species, and D is the diversity index, the number we're trying to find. The higher the value for D we get, the greater the biodiversity. I know this might look confusing, but it'll be clear when we'll work through it. I should point out that there are different variations of Simpson's index. The specific one I'm using here is Simpson's reciprocal index. So, how does it work? As a simple example, let's compare the species diversity with respect to plants in these two ecosystems. We'll start with ecosystem A. It's not immediately obvious what values need to go into the calculation, but if we start by entering the numbers into a table, everything should go smoothly. This ecosystem has five species. First, we'll add in the population of each and then total the column. Next, we subtract one from each of those values. Don't ask me why, just trust me, it's necessary for our calculation. Next, we multiply the first two columns together and then we add those values together. So now we can use the equation. Uppercase n is our total number of all species, this value right here. The funny E-shaped symbol is called sigma and means the sum of. So the bottom part of the equation is just all of the lowercase n times n minus 1 values added up, this value here. The rest is easy, we just put the values into the equation and we end up with a value of 2.28. We can do the same process for ecosystem B, adding the values in the table and substituting them into the equation. For this location we get a value of 3.39. If we only look at the species richness and evenness of each ecosystem, it's not immediately obvious where the biodiversity is highest. But when we use Simpson's Diversity Index, we can see that ecosystem B has the higher value, so it has the highest species diversity.